and that I found originally from the um, uh, Los Angeles Herald, April 24 to May 13, 1910. And when I saw that ad, first of all, what struck me was the use of the term colored pen, because colored was the term that was used then to describe people of color. But I, I, it's been so long since I had ever seen it written um, in, in a format like this. Um, so that's what got me started down this whole journey, actually. The other thing that I've since learned um, about this mining company is it was African American owned. And when you think in 1910, post Civil War, that um, uh, four African American men started a mining company, first in Nevada and then in California. And they are the ones who developed this whole concept of Tuskegee West. It, it's pretty startling. Um, and so I started first with, with the map. Uh, John Massey was born in 1848, died in 1936. He was born in Frederick, Virginia. He was married for 17 years to Lou. They had no children. Um, he was a day laborer. In 1900 was when he moved to Los Angeles, as did many of these people. They moved to the Los Angeles County area first. And that's why this ad was placed in, in LA. Um, he built his home in Lanphier in 1911. And he was a treasurer of this mining company. Um, and he, they had, their one room house was 8 feet by 16 feet, and they had another building which was 15 feet by 25 feet, and it had two rooms, and they had a chicken farm corral. Um, he, and their crops that they grew were barley and hafer corn, which I've since learned is a version of the South African corn that's grown for, um, for animals. To feed animals with. Um, you'll notice that in all, all of the artwork, you'll see an image of a flower or flowers. Um, and I use flowers in my regular, oh, not my regular work. This <laughs> is my regular work, but in my other artwork, I should say. Um, because flowers to me are represent the, the living element that they are the things that grow. And my biggest challenge in creating all of this artwork was to still stay true to my own art and what I was doing uh, outside of this particular exhibit. Um, because I, I'm not a figurative painter, and there aren't enough images of these people to really develop a figurative um, story about them. So I decided that I would use um, the state flower of the states from which each of them came and use that in conjunction with the color or the California poppy itself. So that's the history of um, the creative process. And then I'm going to talk about um, John Richard Walton. I can squeeze over here. Um, he was born in 1853 and died in 1936, born in Missouri. He was married for 26 years to Molly, and they also had no children. Um, interestingly enough, in Missouri, he already owned his house free and clear. Um, but then they moved to, in 1890 is when they moved to the Los Angeles area. He was described as 5'10", with dark eyes, dark hair. He worked as an express man, and in today's language, that would be a courier. Um, he was a laborer, a contractor, and also a teamster because he, he did work for a company that um, had a union at that time. He was literate. You'll find as you read uh, some of the bios of many of these people, they were not literate. They could not read or write. And some of their applications, you'll see they're signed with an X and, and uh, someone else's name to verify that they were the person that they said they were. Um, he owned um, a total of 30, 160 plus 160 acres, and he raised a variety of different um, uh, products. 
but he was the uh, incorporator of the Dunbar Water Company. Three of the families um, pooled their resources and they built a well in, in which they would bring up the water and then make it available to, to some of the other families. I think six women who had actually only started in their own lands. And it's kind of when, when you think of, of women homesteading in 1910 had to be a difficult uh, situation. Um, Hattie was born in Missouri in 1850. She was listed as um, female, black, and keeping house. She did marry Henry in 22. Um, he was a farmhand, as many of his people had been as former slaves. Um, was not literate. And in 1900, they lived in Los Angeles, owned their house free and clear. Um, they then established residence at Lanfair in 1914. And that was a one room house with uh, 12 by 13. It was floored and covered with a roof. They had a barn also that was 15 by 20 feet. Uh, when he was widowed, uh, he moved back to Los Angeles. And um, he uh, moved in with his brother when he moved back to Los Angeles. And you'll notice in each of the panels, there's this kind of a treatment. Um, and so once I decided to use the map as part of the, uh, the artwork, I wanted to somehow or other show the migration of where they had come from. So I developed this iconography of extending the, the tract, side of the tract, and their number out to here, and then looking it back to a map of the U.S. from 1910. So that you got a sense of, of their movement with why it was moving and so on. And again, using the state flower plus the, the California copy. Um, Summers was built in Virginia in 1873. He enlisted as a private in F Company, 10th Cavalry in Washington, D.C. He was also a member of the Buffalo Soldiers. And the Buffalo Soldiers, um, which some of you may already know, they were the first park rangers for the National Park Service. Um, and I, I, I was not aware of that before I started this, but I knew of Buffalo Soldiers and uh, had friends back east whose families are, uh, were, also, were also in that same Buffalo Soldier category. He was discharged uh, from the military at Fort Pancho, Texas in 1878. And that's when he married Millie, and they were married in, for 30 years with no children. Um, in 1895, he was granted uh, his homestead. And he lived in Pasadena while he built his home in Landfair. Um, he was described as five foot 10, colored black eyes, black hair and a laborer, and also owned his house free and clear, and was also literate. Uh, in 1916, his wife died. And then, um, after he left Landfair, he moved uh, to Pasadena. And then he was at the uh, U.S. National Home for Disabled Volunteer Soldiers. And and, um, and for those of you who know L.A., well, at the intersection of um, the 405 and, and Wilshire Boulevard, there's a veterans hospital there. And that's this same uh, facility. It's been there since then. And that's where oh, he and the other uh, Civil War veteran, that's where they... Uh, ended their lives, uh, spent the last days of their lives, I should say, there. And then um, this one, so I need to come on this color. I don't know if you can see it from, from there. Uh, this was Howard Frank Carter, and he was born in 1881, died in 1935. He was born in Fairfax County, Virginia, 
he was also a barber, so I tried to incorporate a, a barber poem, a little bit of a barber poem, <laughs> as a whimsical thing. Um, he was described as native-born, colored, um, medium-filled, brown hair, black eyes. Uh, he was married to Mary Bell. They had one child who did not live. Um, he was registered uh, for the World War I draft, and uh, but also was a, uh, learned to be an engineer, a tractor engineer. And after he got out, he uh, worked for the uh, PA Rice Company and lived in Oxnard. Uh, his home in, in Dan Landfair was 20 by 40 feet. And, it, and I don't know why they listed it. It included 800 railroad ties, but I guess that was important at the time. <laughs> and the price of the house was $800. Um, he had a two-story chicken house, which was 8 feet by 19 feet, and the value of that was $250. And he had a barn, a corral, and a garage, and that value was $300. Um, and, when he moved to Landfair was when he registered to vote. And it's really interesting because when most of the people who were listed as having registered to vote um, were all registered as Republicans. And um, Abraham Lincoln, of course, was a Republican, which is probably why they registered as Republicans at that point. However, when they moved, like he moved then to um, Needles, and then he registered it as a Democrat, um, which I don't know, I just found kind of interesting. All the artwork I created was, I did it on my iPad. And then it was um, printed on the raw linen canvas. And I made that decision about the raw linen way back in the beginning because raw linen is to me the color that. Um, is the color of the dirt in the desert, if you will. It's a desert color. And the texture of raw linen without a white gesso primer over it is rough. 